This is the first video in a 10-part series developed by the Institute of Water Research at Michigan State University and funded by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It will walk you through the basics of utilizing high-impact targeting, also known as HIT, to help address erosion and sedimentation issues in the Great Lakes Basin. This introduction will cover HIT's background and development, limitations, and the features of HIT's homepage. High Impact Targeting was developed by the Institute of Water Research at Michigan State University with support from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service. The HIT system prioritizes agricultural areas in terms of erosion and sedimentation risk in order to facilitate effective targeting of soil conservation practices. The GIS-based HIT model produces spatially explicit estimates of annual soil erosion and sediment delivery for the entire Great Lakes Basin through an online mapping interface. The HIT model combines two models, the Revised Universal Soil Loss Equation, or Russell, which estimates annual soil erosion, and the Spatially Explicit Delivery Model, SEDMOD, which determines the percentage of eroded soil that reaches nearby streams. A field scale evaluation assessed whether HIT correctly characterized the sediment loading risk at over 200 locations. Results showed that HIT's characterization was correct at roughly 70% of the sites. Return visits to a sample of the 30% of sites where HIT did not accurately represent risk revealed that coarse land cover inputs and relatively flat topographies led to the model's poor performance in those areas. Before moving on, it's important I cover some basic assumptions and limitations of the HIT model. To start, HIT is intended for agricultural lands only, and is not suitable for urban analysis. Secondly, Russell, which estimates the on-land erosion component for HIT, only measures one form of erosion, sheet. So, HIT's estimates don't account for gully, bank, or wind erosion, which can be significant sources depending on the location. This is why HIT estimates of sediment loading at a watershed scale should be used for relative comparisons only. It's probable that any HIT estimate of sediment loading for a watershed is below the actual amount, but this doesn't limit a user's ability to utilize HIT to target practices within a watershed. And though the raw numbers may not quantify gully erosion, the field evaluations have shown that the model's spatially explicit results can help you locate them. Now that we've gone through HIT's assumptions, let's go to the home page. HIT is accessed at www.iwr.msu.edu forward slash HIT2. For more information about the HIT model, go to the About section on the HIT homepage. More tutorial materials for HIT are located under Help. Finally and most importantly, HIT data can be accessed from the homepage or the map. I'll be covering these in the next few tutorials. That wraps up the introduction to the HIT model. The next video will cover how you can access HIT data from the homepage in more detail. Thanks for watching.